Good evening, sir. Nagaraj, sir. Welcome to day 19, data structures using C, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone.
Good evening, sir. Nagar, sir. Once again, a 20-day <laughs> short-term training program in on a practical approach to implement that using C. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank to you, I'm sir. Handle. I am handling sessions. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all for this penultimate day of this 20 days short term training program on data structures. On behalf of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, NIT Nagaland, and the Host Institute, Sarnandra College of Engineering and Technology Autonomous, a warm welcome to all of you. And today is the 19th day, and tomorrow will be our last day of this workshop. So in these two days, I would like to cover a good amount of concepts, the basic concepts about another data structure called as graphs. So let us quickly start our session today. Let me share the screen. Yesterday, I just gave a small introduction about graphs, right? So just a one minute recap of where we use graphs. Suppose you can type Vijayawada to Hyderabad airport. You just type Vijayawada to Hyderabad airport. The first one which you may get is a Google map. So it shows the route. Maybe it is showing the car route. You can also click on a bus or a train. You are going to get a train route also. Right? So whatever mode of travel it is, suppose you click a flight, you can see Vijayawada to, I don't know, flights not available. It, it says, as of now, flight not available. I don't know, usually from Vijayawada to Hyderabad, there is a flight, but anyways. So if you want uh, the directions, it, it clearly gives you the directions, right? Which route to be followed. This is the best example of the concepts which we are going to learn today. The concept is graphs. I may not write the program on graphs because theoretical concept itself needs some good amount of time to cover the concepts of graphs. So. Let us see what is a graph. So graphs is definitely one of the data structure. Graph is definitely one of the data structure. You can say, instead of a simple data structure, you can also say that graph is basically a non-linear data structure. Graphs are non-linear data structures. So what is non-linear? Obviously non-linear means the nodes are not sequential in fashion. The nodes are not sequential in fashion. Okay, now, you take any data structure, there are group of nodes. There are group of nodes. So obviously a graph is a group of nodes. Group of nodes 
connected to each other group of nodes connected to each other so there are two concepts here there are two entities you can say there are two entities in graphs okay one is called as vertex or you can say vertices so vertices means nodes that are part of the graph nodes that are part of the graph and there is a second entity these are connected links between a connected link between two nodes is called as a as an edge so set of edges set of edges nodes that are part of the graph so you can say set of nodes set of nodes okay so a graph is a group of nodes connected to each other there are two entities one is vertices and edges then it's a non linear data structure it is a non linear data structure and characteristics of graphs what are the characteristics okay so before telling the characteristics i think better i should draw one small example mathematically mathematically we can define the define a graph g as set of vertices and set of edges so basically a graph g is combination of for example set of vertices is denoted as v and set of edges are denoted as e then you can say a graph is basically a combination of v comma e where v is the set of ed vertices vertices means the nodes and e is the set of edges then what is v so you can say v equal to like v1 comma v2 so on vn for example there are four nodes a b c and d then v equal to a comma b comma c comma d it looks like pure mathematics it's a graph theory right it's a pure mathematics nothing more than that which you might be aware of graph theory data structures is na uh, sorry the graphs concept in data structure is nothing but you can say it's a graph theory in mathematics and e equal to ordered pair of edges what is an ordered pair what is an ordered pair with respect to the edge with respect to the edge the ordered pair is simple everybody see if 
Sometimes I may say vertex, sometimes I may say A, a node. Both are same. Okay, when I am explaining. Im imagine vertex A is connected to vertex B. If vertex A is connected to B, then there exists an edge between A and B. You can also denote edge 1 is equal to, you can write in this way. So this is the ordered pair. This is the A comma E. E equal to A comma B means A is connected to B. Okay, or B is connected to A means B comma A. Now, let us see one small example. Let us see one small example. How graphs are connected to each other. Then we will see the characteristics of graph. This is how a graph looks like. A simple graph. A, B, C, D, and E. Now, in this example, in this example, the, verti the vertices are A, B, C, D, and E. Obviously, the nodes are the vertices. The edges are Everybody, please see here. It's basically, the vertices are, you can say, the vertices V is equal to set of A comma B comma C comma D comma E. Now, the edges are. Imagine, everybody, please observe. A and B are connected. A and B are connected. So I can write over an edge. A and B. A and C is also connected. So I can say in this way. And A comma D are also connected. A B, A D, A C. Then C E. Or you say B. Let us take B now. B is connected to A, obviously. A is connected to B. B is also connected to A. Then B is connected to D. And B is also connected to C. Hope everybody is following me. Then B is all over. Now C. C is connected to A, B, D, and E. C is connected to A. That means there is an edge. And C is connected to B. C is connected to D. And C is also connected to E. Now take D. D is connected to A. D is connected to B. D is connected to C. And D is also connected to E. Hope there is no doubt in this. Then take E. 
E E is connected to C and E is connected to D. So total there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 edges are there. There are 16 edges. Number of vertices. Five and number of edges. In this example, 16. If anything is missed, please correct me. Any doubts still here? Any doubts? Please respond. Any, any doubts? Shall I proceed? So what we are able to understand right now, graphs are non-linear. By seeing the diagram itself, you can see there is absolutely no linearity. Right? Any node is connected to any other node, right? And graph can be actually a group of nodes connected to each other, okay? Nodes are called vertices. Connections are called edges. So mathematically, a graph G is B and E, combination of or representation in terms of vertices and edges. So what is V? It's set of vertices v1, v2 to vn, and E is actually set of ordered pair, set of ordered pair of edges. So what is an ordered pair? If A is connected to B, then the ordered pair A comma B denotes there is an edge between A and B. Okay, so I have taken a small example, and now let us try to understand some characteristics of characteristics of graphs. Now, everybody please observe, uh, before, yeah, before understanding the characteristics of graphs, I would like to just tell you, you take the example of, so before understanding some Unique characteristics of graphs. Let us have a recap of stacks, queues, linked lists, and trees. I'm not going to tell you the all the uh, recap concepts of stack or anything but with respect to with respect to the beginning point of the respective data structure respect to data structure what i mean to say stack Top of the stack is the reference. Only through tag, uh, top of the stack, you can access the stack. So there are on, there is only one reference for the entire stack. Only one reference. Only one reference pointer with respect to the beginning point of the data structure. Okay, now 
take the concept of q here also one reference point for insertion one reference point for deletion so front for deletion rear for insertion so there are two references take linked list only one reference point head of the linked list head means first node head means first node of the linked list you take tree finally you take tree only one reference point here also root node of the tree so till now whatever data structure we studied whatever data structure we studied every data structure has a very limited number of reference points other than q other than q even q also you can say only one reference point with respect to insertion or one reference point with respect to deletion even though it looks like two you are going to use only one at a time you are not going to use both at a time because you don't insert and delete a node exactly at the same time instance so that's what i mean to say when you come to the characteristics of graphs when you come to the characteristics of graphs there is some peculiar concept about graph okay for example let me take the screenshot of this and then hope everybody understood till here any doubts till here if you have any doubt you please let me know so unique characteristics of graph data structures or graph data structure there are some unique characteristics okay so what are there there is no starting point of the graph like top of the stack front of the queue first node of the linked list root node of the tree such as top of the stack front of the queue first node in the linked list and root node of the tree why there is no because all the nodes are independent to each other all the or you can say individual vertex basically node in the graph vertex means node in the graph are independent to each other there is no way we can have a starting point of the graph that is the first peculiar concept in graph now second concept is trees are also having nodes and connections correct trees are also having nodes and connections oh. 
for example take a tree let me just take one tree so for example this is a tree this is also having a node and left child or right child something like that everybody knows about a tree i believe right so then what is the difference it is also looking like obviously it is looking like a graph the way we are writing may be different but this also looks like a graph obviously see here suppose you take a tree this is also looking like a this is a tree a tree also has nodes and connections but three are also having but then what is the difference between a tree and a graph that's my next question which is a very peculiar concept about a tree when compared to graph okay now the answer goes like this yes trees also have nodes and connections obviously i can't say no why because here we say edge there we say left child right child only the nomenclature the terminology is changed but the concept looks alike but the concept looks alike okay but trees are as i click acyclic means that means there are no connections which make the tree cyclic in nature what i mean to say suppose you take this tree d and e are not connected you can't have a cycle cyclic nature of formation in the links that's the difference between a tree and a graph but when you consider but in graph as you can observe from the example given here sorry guys yeah if but in graph as you can observe from the example given here okay a graph can be cyclic in nature it can be acyclic also it can be acyclic also right so everybody please observe every tree is a graph but not every graph is a tree that's the a peculiar characteristic of a graph so these are the two uh, independent characteristics that you can observe only in the graphs but not in any other data structure 
the first peculiar characteristic is with respect to the starting node which is the starting node there is absolutely no starting node in the graph and even though trees are also looking like nodes and connections trees are acyclic in nature but whereas a graph is cyclic in nature that means it can be acyclic or cyclic because of this every tree can be considered as a graph but not the other way around if you have any doubt please ask me now if you have any doubt you can ask me any doubts till now so this is the basic definition of a graph how a graph is defined cyclic means okay vvs rao sir let me explain for example see here a is connected to b a is connected to d d is connected to b and b is connected to a so there is a cycle formed between a d and b not only there almost you see d c c e e d so there is a cycle but in case of a tree there is no loop cycle means loop cycle means loop cycle means a loop which can be formed due to the connections due to the connections any more doubts yeah it's a it's a closed path closed path where you come to the point where you started so you can say cyclic connection means you come back to the point where you started without coming back and changing the route same route you will follow and you will come for example you take a tree you may come from a to b p to d from d directly you can't go back to a unless until you can go back but you can't for example imagine there is a d to e and e to a then only it is a cycle okay hope everybody understood the loop which can be formed but in a graph it is allowed in a graph it is allowed tree it is not allowed yeah any more doubts any more doubts okay now let us try to understand some more concepts let the graph be there let the graph be there okay let me go to my uh, screenshots which i have taken from the class notes so i have told you i think let me i think i should clear the annotations it looks very awkward that's fine i can clear all the drawings yes now let me try to highlight as i already told you every tree is a graph 
because every tree is a cycle a cyclic no cycle but every graph is not a tree every graph in case the graph is a cyclic then it can be a tree now a graph is a non linear data structure its set of nodes and connections nodes are called as vertices connections are edges i think i already explained everything okay mathematically we can represent v is set of v1 to vn e is an ordered pair of e1 e2 e3 to en where ei is bx comma vy where vx and vy are part of the vertices v and when there is a connection you can also have a then only we will say there is an edge between now for example i just connected some in reality where we use in pizza delivery the pizza delivery boy uses a graph in online shopping there is a graph what is online shopping and graph related to very simple you ordered an item you ordered an item right then it will go to a particular distributor you it will go to a particular distributor okay then what will happen from there to that is the source node and your home is the destination node then they will plan the shortest route such that your item will be delivered to the best possible time Sim similarly you take uber or ola cab rent service they will also make sure the customer is dropped at the destination at the best possible time in the shortest possible route even you take maps railway map air airlines or roadway or a google map everywhere there is a use of there is a use of graphs for example uh, maybe you may not understand the example which i am i have written in the board see um nit is located in a small village called as chumukudima village okay and there is a chumukudima town so that is written as chumu and we have a fire station exactly in the foothills of nit nagaland i say foothills because nit nagaland is located on a hill top completely it is on hills only two three participants who are there in my college in this workshop can understand what i am saying but from there we have two different routes to go to the town okay one we say police first gate another one is police second gate uh, some other gate called as second gate so there is one police camp here near the first gate right so that also can be represented in terms of a graph suppose if i have to tell you an example where everybody can understand simple example imagine this is vijayawada okay imagine this is kolkata and this is dimapur dimapur means the district where i stay dimapur okay so there is one more place called as gauhati so i can come from vijayawada to kolkata kolkata to dimapur or i can come to vijayawada to kolkata kolkata to gauhati gauhati to dimapur i can directly come from vijayawada to gauhati now this is nothing but a graph so anything node need not be a b c d 1 2 3 4 node can be anything you take it can be a node okay so that's the small introduction about graphs take a couple of minutes break now and we we will resume the session with the concepts of graph to be continued now the time is 559 in couple of minutes 549 we will meet at 552 
If you have any doubt still here, you can ask me. Okay, so let us continue our session. Just imagine there are some theoretical concepts that we have to understand in graphs. Okay, so Let us see some technical concepts and terminology used in graphs. So let us have a look into them. For example, let us take a graph with only two nodes, a simple example, right? There is no need that there should be so many nodes. Even if one node can be a graph, only one node also can be a graph. Now, imagine there is a graph like this. A and B are connected. So A and B are connected to each other to form a simple graph. Now, there is not a big deal in this, but here you have to understand one concept, okay? Observe that the connection does not have any direction. It is like there is a road from point A to point B. Only a single road is there. So it's like a two-way road. From People can move from A to B or B to A. Okay. So direction means a specific symbol denoted with some arrow. Okay. At this point of time, there is no, there is no arrow. Okay, so that means the edge here is undirected edge. Okay, so what is undirected edge? Undirected edge means an edge without direction. It means an edge without direction. What is this direction all about? And what is, what is the significance of this direction? What is the significance of the direction of the edge? Significance is from which node we could have connected to another node. Significance is, for example, in case of undirected edge, in this case, A to B is the edge. In this case, A to B, there is an undirected edge. That means the there are that means there are there there are two ordered pairs. Like a comma B
एंड बी का मे इट्स लाइक ए टू वे रोड लाइक ए टू वे रोड इफ देर इज ए रोड बिटवीन जंक्शन वन टू जंक्शन टू पीपल कैन कम फ्रॉम जंक्शन वन टू जंक्शन टू और जंक्शन टू टू जंक्शन वन okay now that is about so what is so now we have introduced a concept technical concept that is called as undirected edge an edge without direction that's the terminology right then what is the point of uh, discussing about a undirected edge here when you have an undirected edge between two nodes that means there are always two ordered pairs source to destination destination to source and basically there is no source here or destination you i am just taking a as source b as destination you can also take b as source and a as destination that's what it mean now if a graph has only undirected edges then that graph is called as undirected graph it's very simple now a new concept came not only a graph graph particularly is called as undirected graph when there are edges and all edges are undirected any doubt still here you please tell let me know if you have any doubt please let me know any doubts okay the next technical terminology is adjacent node adjacent node or you can say adjacent vertex usually we say node okay node means vertex vertex and node are used interchangeably what is an adjacent node that's the terminology is adjacent node and what is the technical concept behind it okay what is adjacency what is adjacent refers referring here what is adjacency referring here okay now everybody please observe in case in case there is an edge between or from a to or from node a or vertex a a to vertex b if there is an edge from a to b then please observe here b is adjacent to a b is adjacent to a not a is adjacent to b for example if i can go from vijayawada to delhi delhi is adjacent to vijayawada and if you can come from vijayawada to delhi then so in case of undirected edge both the nodes are adjacent to each other in the above example a is adjacent to b and vice versa or you can say 
and also b is adjacent to a any doubt still here you can ask me if you have any doubt you please ask me at every point of some kind of definition if you have any doubts you can always ask me see i go slowly because see the concept should be very clear if i simply show you my screenshot and i keep on explaining right it may not be very useful for you any more doubts okay i believe the concepts are clear so let us see the next one so when we talk about undirected edge undirected edge undirected edge that means there is a directed edge also let us see what it is so let us take a simple graph imagine there are two nodes now you see the difference between the first example and second example in the first example here a is connected to b b is not connected to a because it is like a one way route sometimes there are some one way routes we may go in a different direction and police may catch us that's a different case but in general a one way route is supposed to be only in one direction but not in the other direction there may be some other route there may be some other route okay so in this example in this graph the edge has a direction it is pointing from a to b that means the edge is from a to b but not from b to a so here the edge is called as directed edge what is a directed edge an edge that has direction is called as directed edge so in a directed edge in an or in a directed edge there can be only one ordered pair in this example a comma b but in the case of undirected edge both the ordered pairs are possible but here there is only one so if a graph has only directed edges then that graph is called as directed graph that call is called as a directed graph any doubts you please ask me now here when it comes to the concept of adjacency in the above example a is adjacent to b b is adjacent to a okay 
here when it comes to the concept of adjacency b is adjacent to a a is not adjacent to b any doubts you please ask me now if you have any doubts okay shall i go ahead let me clear all the drawings now there is a chance okay so let me just write uh, or i can show you here itself come to the undirected edge or undirected graph everybody see the concept here now this is a undirected graph it's a undirected graph so a to b means b to a so this is 2 this is 2 2 2 2 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 2 are 12 there are 12 ordered pair of edges hope everybody understood so what i mean to say is there is an edge like a comma b obviously b comma a then a comma d i hope everybody understood what i am saying and obviously d comma a similarly a to c and a to sorry c to a b to c c to b and also c to d d to c 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 what are the other things b to c c yeah b to d b to d and d to b b to d and d to b but when you come to the concept of directed graph when you come to the concept of directed graph there will be only six ordered pairs so for example i have written one more swami please wait please wait swami i have not explained that so when it comes to the directed graph now you see here you have you can't count b to a because there is a direction there is a direction so here you can say a comma b b comma c d comma c a comma d and c to a and b to d there are only six ordered pairs now as one of our participants swami is asking me what will happen if there are directed and undirected together a mixed graph is a graph that consists of 
directed edge one or more and also undirected edges or edge at least if one combination of both basically combination of this is a hybrid combination of directed graph and also undirected graph basically i hope everybody understood that so tell me one real life example how come there is a directed edge and undirected edge simple example you take one big city the main main roads may be having a different one way traffic rules but you go to a small street there won't be a two way road it will be a only one road where both people both sides people can travel it's as simple as that that is about mixed graph that is about mixed graph okay so now let us try to understand some more concepts you see there is a concept called as parallel edge there is a concept called as parallel edge what is parallel edge very simple when there is more than one edge between two vertices or nodes then those edges are called as parallel edges hope it is very clear now the edge can be the edge can be undirected or directed or combination of both or any combination so here i have written two different edges right sir tell me one example how can it is possible two edges are there it is very simple between place a and place b there can be two roads that's all it's as simple as that then they are parallel edges okay one may be having long distance one may be in a shorter distance for example there is a bus route there is a train route they can be considered as route one is bus route one is train route obviously it's a parallel edge any doubts any doubts now there is a chance there is a chance that there are nodes but no connectivity there are nodes but no connectivity okay so everybody please observe here so as i am staying in northeast so i have taken an example of a graph with no edges is called as null graph so oh, that means edge the set of edges can be null phi also take a real life example there is imphal that is manipur there is shillong imphal is capital of manipur shillong is capital of meghalaya and kohima is capital of nagaland you take the rail connectivity you take the rail connectivity you can't say just because there is no railway track 
you can't say there is no place like kohima right so there are graph there are nodes in the graph but there is no connectivity there is no connectivity no train route available that means what there is no edge there is no edge any doubts you please tell ask me any doubts any doubts no doubts okay fine now let me draw one small example to explain one more concept now let us see one real world example to understand the concept of articulation point in the graph i would like to tell you articulation point okay for that let me take one real life example let me draw one small graph again i am taking the example of railways there is a place called as nellur i think everybody knows in andhra pradesh there is a place called as ongol oh, sorry i should write chennai madras right there is a place chennai everybody knows about this then we have nellur we have pongol there are so many other places okay but i just want to write there is a place called as vijayawada you have a place called as rajamandri you have a place called as samarkot and you have a place called as visakhapatnam so imagine this is a railway route it's a railway route from chennai to visakhapatnam so i have not written all the uh, places see exactly in front of vijayawada right there is a krishna river obviously one end of vijayawada i don't know how many of you might have traveled i think you i believe that you people will know so there is a rail bridge and obviously just before rajamandri you have godavari river godavari bridge is there okay so some people may understand uh, get a doubt why he, this fellow is writing like this okay imagine this is a graph uh, undirected means you can obviously go from chennai to visakhapatnam or 
visakhapatnam to chennai okay now everybody please carefully understand this is a very sensitive point not only that this is also a sensitive point okay imagine there is some mishap some natural calamity has occurred some natural calamity has caused some issue with bridge near vijayawada on krishna river so what happens people will stop the train movement now everybody observe imagine the bridge is completely collapsed imagine the bridge is completely washed away due to floods just imagine then what will happen this oh sorry so the connectivity is gone the connectivity is gone the bridge is gone means connectivity is gone now everybody observe a single graph became two disjoint graphs here so if we consider the entire train route as a graph due to the collapse of krishna river bridge now we can see two disjoint graphs are formed what is this disjoint graph doing here it is very simple you can't reach vijayawada from chennai in a train that's all but till chennai to ongol or till tenali or krishna uh, river uh, krishna canal junction till there you can travel so that does not mean the entire train route is collapsed the entire train route became two different disjoint gaps so that trains can still move from vijayawada to visakhapatnam this bridge collapse does not affect the train route from vijayawada to visakhapatnam or chennai to ongol but only thing is the connectivity is lost so such kind of edges they are called as articulation point in the graph so here we have two articulation points i am telling two sensitive points every if you break the chennai to nellore then also nellore to visakhapatnam you can go i am just telling you some real life example every point is not articulation point when an edge makes a single graph into two disjoint graphs then that particular point is called as articulation point so when an edge makes two disjoint graphs to make it into one graph then that is an articulation point why i took this example why i took this example is i am going back to the history 
go back to the history before the krishna bridge means the krishna river rail bridge was constructed people used to come till before vijayawada and there will be small done kind of thing right they will cross the river and come to vijayawada this was happened earlier okay that's why I, i thought i will take this example okay you don't write this example in exams if anybody is asking but if somebody says can you please tell me a real world example of so why we have to talk about articulation point is just imagine people when they are constructing the design of the network you take a computer network or you take any railway network or any roadway networks exactly i will tell you in airways kolkata and gauhati are the articulation points of northeast you remove kolkata airport and gauhati airport you can't come to my place in air because via gauhati or via kolkata only i can come to nagaland from my place are you able to understand so those are the most sensible points that people will take more care on that okay so i hope everybody understood this example if you have any doubts you please ask me if you have any doubts you please ask me so that is about articulation point see here let me show you one example here there are two graphs actually there is only single graph there is a single graph okay and there is an edge between d and e imagine this is chennai nellore or some other like chirala ungol something right and this is vijayawada and visakhapatnam so this is the articulation point where there is a danger if this is gone a b c d is one graph e f g h is another graph but if the point is still there then it is all together single graph so if there is any such kind of edge where the non existence of that edge makes two disjoint graphs then that particular point is called as articulation point any more doubts you please ask me if you have any doubts yeah any doubts today lot of theory is there because it's a new concept graphs without the theory concept i can't explain the concepts of uh, other, other concepts of graphs any doubts please respond take a 1 minute break here we will resume now time is 629 631 we will resume okay now let us see some more concepts in graphs one of the student is asking about
real world example of directed graph okay roll number 586 take a one way road can you come back in the same road in the same road can you come back to the same place police will catch you that's as simple as that no sir i will there is no police sir in that road i will go back mean that's a different case right so dr mallikarjun sir i didn't talk about pims algorithm i have, i am going to talk about pims algorithm tomorrow okay now let us see some more concepts like there is a concept called as weight of an edge there is a concept called as till here sir for example uh, in the previous for example you just write a graph here imagine there is a graph a b c and d when you talk about directed edge or undirected edge okay let me write some directed edges so this is a graph this is a graph now in case if you put some weight on it weight means some number in this way what is this weight now i am writing some numbers on the edge okay so weight can be any metric for example it can be a time it can be distance it can be cost for example the time taken or the distance between a to b is 3 kilometers or the time taken is 3 hours or it will take 3 uh, uh, for example 3 rupees from a to b it's it's not so cheap in the real time but i'm just telling you so a weighted edge is something like there is a number given on top of the edge that particular number basically we say any metric that metric can be time distance cost so what is a weighted edge there is a weight associated if if a weight is associated with an edge then that edge is called as weighted edge this has lot of applications in real time okay so weight can be weight can be any metric like time distance cost etc now if you have any doubt please ask me let us continue the concept of weighted edge so now you see there are parallel edges a to b 5 a to b 3 for example 3 kilometers 5 kilometers okay then what is a weighted directed graph a directed graph where all the edges have some weights okay so that is called as a weighted directed graph you can have undirected uh, weighted graph also absolutely there is no problem right now what are the applications of it let us consider a small graph let us consider a small graph in this example imagine this graph 
Okay. So from place A, imagine there are four places. There are four places. In case, just hold on. Imagine the nodes are places like A, B, C, D. Okay. I want to reach place D from place A. Then obviously, now you can understand there are how many possibilities? How many possibilities? Okay. So, a to D, the weight is 53. Imagine it can be a distance or there is a shortcut. If you want to go in a direct route, now there is a 53 km. Imagine the weight is kilometers. The weight or distance. Weight is the metric called as distance in kilometers. Then, obviously, you people will understand now what I am going to tell. So, now you have different combinations. Direct route from A to D, 53 kilometers. A to B and B to D. 5 kilometers, 2 kilometers. Example, there is a shortcut. There is a route which takes you some other long distance. See, it is a, just an imaginative uh, example I am telling. So you should not question me, how come, sir, A to D direct route is 53, but there is a A to B and B to D 7 kilometers. Okay. Imagine there is another route, A to C and C to D. Now, Which route you will take to reach A to D? Everybody will say, I will take the second route. Because its distance is less. Its distance is less. Any doubts? Any doubts in this? So the, the use of weighted graph, most likely, most likely people use weighted graphs, right? It can be time, distance, cost, or any other metric to take some decisions, right? To take some decisions. For example, sometimes, sometimes imagine, let me draw one small example. The decision is dynamic. The decision is always dynamic. What I mean to say, imagine a situation. There are two routes from A to B. There are two routes. Okay. One is flight. A to B. Another one is train. A to B. Okay. A student in vacation might take the train route which is the longest distance, but the cheapest price. But same student, in case of emergency, might take the costliest route That is flight, but 
the distance is less are you able to understand so there are different different dynamics which will be playing under our mindset or any any network or any uh, graph related algorithm should take care of all the metrics what is the situation then which route to be followed for example i will tell you a simple uh, example sometimes we may not go on a highway but we may take some short route so that in the main highway for example near the city even though it is a highway there are so many uh, signals coming near to us but if you take some shortcuts it may take some long time or long distance not time distance may be long but you will cover because there is no traffic signals there i think everybody might have come across such kind of scenarios in real in your real time so this is the concept then next concept the next concept is called as degree the next concept is called as degree degree means very simple take a graph here take a graph okay so here we have to understand to our concept of degree of the graph for that we are going to use one example now this screenshot which i have taken in my class is the concept of degree not the beta degree or m tech degree the degree of the graph what is a degree what is the degree of the graph it is very simple degree of the graph is equal to sum of all the nodes means it is basically in degree plus out degree of a node like that each node we have to say okay so instead of saying degree of the graph i should say degree of the node for each node entire graph means for each node okay so then what is in degree in degree means if a if an edge is pointing towards the node if it is pointing towards the node then its in degree is 1 one. one node i am talking about one particular node okay in case of directed edge in case of undirected edge then both are there what is out degree if an edge is going out of a node then its out degree is 1 not exactly 1 we have to count everything now everybody please observe clearly in the node in degree of a is 0 because no edge is coming towards a but everybody please see here you consider b one is coming inside two are going outside b to d b to c for a everybody see nobody is coming towards a but a is going to b a is going to c similarly take the node c 
two nodes are coming inside C. That's why in degree is two. Hope everybody understood. So add both the, so what is the degree of A? How many are going inside? Sorry, coming inside and going outside. Zero plus two, two. So that's it about the concept of degree. Now, why we are going to discuss this concept? Because in case, if the in degree is zero, if the in degree is zero, then it is called as source node. That means you can only go to some place from that node, but you can't reach that. For example, you take A here. A is the source node. You can go from B to C. You can't, unless until you start from A itself, your journey, you can't reach A from any other node. That's what it means to say here. Sync node, where the out degree is zero. For example, D is a sync node. Why D is a sync node? Why? Because D can be reached. But from D, you can't go to any place. You can't go to any place. So it is called as a sync node. Any more doubts? Please ask me if you have any doubts. Hope there is no doubt. Now, the most important concept is how can I represent, how can I represent a graph? How can I represent a graph with respect to a sequence or like how we represented a tree? We represented a tree by making use of an array that is sequential representation and linked list representation. In the similar fashion, we can represent graph in two ways. We can represent graph in two ways. We can represent graph graphs in two ways, which are already written in my, to save some time, I am directly showing you my class board, which I have explained last year to my college students. Now, we can represent graphs in two ways. First one is called as sequential representation. In sequential representation, we use double dimension, double dimensional array. It is called as, obviously double dimensional array is called as a matrix. So it is called as adjacency matrix. It is called as adjacency matrix. So what I mean to say, in adjacency matrix, right? Now, what is adjacent concept? Already I explained you. In case of a undirected edge, B is adjacent to A, A is adjacent to B. But in case of a directed edge, B is adjacent to A, but not the other way around. So if you understand the adjacency, now take the example, one second. Take the example here. Let us try to uh, understand. Now there is a graph. There is a graph. Let us consider this graph. Imagine it's a directed graph. You can also write for undirected graph, okay? 
now everybody please see here you have to draw one uh, there is a row and column both are listed with the vertices of the graph a b c d and a b c d so what i am referring see here you have to write a b c d in the row and a b c and d in the column now now please observe the mathematical formula or how to fill the adjacency matrix this is how to fill the adjacency matrix how to fill the adjacency matrix how to fill the adjacency matrix this is very interesting also why it is interesting i will tell you how to fill the adjacency matrix so a i j i means row j is column i j equal to 1 if there is an edge between vi comma vj otherwise zero it is very simple to fill the adjacency matrix so adjacency matrix a is defined as a a power 1 a power 1 means a a power 1 is also a so this is a a means adjacency matrix now let us try to fill a to a is zero that means what from a can you reach to a directly for example if there is a edge like this in this way then you will put one here hope everybody understood what i am saying because it's not there i will not keep now a to b b to a is there a to b is not there so zero a to c yes it's there so i will put here a to c hope everybody understood if you have any doubts ask me in filling the adjacency matrix any doubts in filling the adjacency matrix please let me know that means what by seeing the adjacency matrix you can directly tell which nodes are connected which nodes are connected okay now the powerful concept of adjacency matrix is multiply a with a you you know matrix multiplication right multiply a with a that means you will get a square everybody please observe you will get a square what is multiplying a with a just see here if you multiply a with a you are going to get this particular matrix which i highlighted in the left hand side of my screen this one i am talking about this one okay now what is this a square represents a power k i am writing a power k in a common manner a power k represents number of paths of length k k means this power between v i and v j what does it mean let me take the example which i highlighted here b to c the value is 2 in a square See here in a square. In a square, b to c is two. That means there are two parts of length two. 
what is this length sir see if you can go from a to b directly that is length 1 direct non stop but if you can go from a to b so via c then it is a to c c to b then 1 1 length 2 okay that me what i mean to say everybody oh sorry yeah it let it be there so b to c c here b and c the length is means in a square there is two that means you can start from b to c with length two there are two paths let us see those paths okay everybody see this highlighted thing now let me highlight here in a square b to c 2 means c b to a length 1 a to c length 2 so total length 2 one half and second half b to a a to c and b to d d to c so what will happen if you do a cube what will happen if you do a cube that means a power k k is 3 here that means number of number of paths of length k that means a three length for example again b to c there is a 2 here what does what does it mean b to d d to a a to c b to c c to d c to d c to c you can visit the note twice also but with length 2 this is the advantage of having a adjacency matrix if you have any doubt you please ask me now any doubts you please ask me if you have any doubts please let me know so the beauty of using adjacency matrix is you can understand with its own multiplication you will know how many paths are there of length k by multiplying a with a repeatedly okay if there is no doubts asked let me go to the last topic of the day today the next one is linked list representation so there are two ways to represent first one is using a double dimensional array the next one is using linked list okay how to do a linked list representation take a graph in step 1 in step 1 that is this side left hand side write the adjacent nodes of each node there is a connection from a to c that means a to c there is a connection now for b a d and c similarly for c there is one that is d for d there are two a and c now for b you can write d c a or c a d or a t c any combination you can write you can write any combination similarly a and c here also you can write any combination like you can write a c or you can write c a also both are allowed both are allowed both are allowed now what do you have to do in step 2 in step 2 you will take 
a array of single linked lists. Array of means group of single linked lists. The first one is here. A connect to C. There is no more node, so null. Similarly, B. You can write from B D. After that, the next adjacent of means where B is connected, and you will write after that null. Similarly, C and D, and D A. Yes, it is not A to C here. In this example, what are the adjacent nodes? Means if there is a edge between uh, from D to A and D to C, you can write D A C D C A. This is how you can represent a graph using linked list. Tomorrow we will see two concepts. That is graph traversal. and one concept is there called as spanning tree there i am going to explain kruskal's algorithm and prim's algorithm that is for tomorrow there ends our today's session and tomorrow we will meet in the final session and we will discuss about how we can traverse the graphs and then we will see a concept called as spanning tree and minimum spanning tree where i am going to discuss true algorithms that is that is about uh, the means for getting a minimum spanning tree we have two greedy algorithms that is kruskal's algorithm and prim's algorithm tomorrow i am going to explain the traversals and spanning tree algorithms so baskar has asked a doubt can we represent directed graph by using compact list baskar teja what is a compact list can you please explain because i personally I, i don't know about compact list what is compact list sorry i didn't hear about that if you can tell me what is it i can uh, respond if you have any more doubts you please ask me over to the host institute now thank you guys for your patience listening for this 19 days tomorrow is the last session over to the host institute who is there in the host institute ramakrishna sir omsi sir Omsi sir or Ramakrishna sir, can you please come online, please? Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, once again, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful marvelous session. And uh, thank you, sir. Sir, small request, I think Ramakrishna sir also telling. Sir, 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 sir. sir. Good evening, sir. sir. Omsi sir and many many sir. Talking for the concepts, sir. Hi, sir. sir. students are there sir giving feedback sir for today's session now i call to bagya trinath please give me your valuable feedback on today's session yeah bagya trinath Good evening, sir. Very Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I learned the concept very easily by your clear explanation, sir. Thanks for spending your time and also giving your valuable knowledge for us. This workshop is one of the great programs held by our Swarnandra College professors, Nagaraju, sir. my request is uh, to conduct one more session on uh, searching and sorting techniques that uh, so we will get uh, more knowledge on them sir okay will you sir uh, definitely if uh, you are interested and if permission is given to me 
I can definitely take tomorrow. I can't take that session because tomorrow I have to complete some concepts of graphs. So if you people are willing, I can take one more session on searching and sorting. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. I am feeling so happy to participate in this workshop, sir. Thank you, uh, Ram Krishna, sir, and Nagraj, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bhagatrinath. Sir, one more participant is there, sir. Now I call to uh, Vaishnavi. Vaishnavi. ECB. CR. Sir, can I... Sir, audible, sir? Uh, audible, audible. Audible, audible. Hi, sir. Good evening. My name is Vaishnavi. I am the student of Smanandra College. I am very glad to listen our class, sir. I attend our C programming workshop also, sir. I explain very concept, every concept in clear way, sir, with program also, sir. And please explain searching and sorting uh, workshop also, sir, uh, because these two concepts are there in our syllabus also, sir. We covered all the concepts, but this topic, these two topics are there in our syllabus, sir. Please try okay. to extend two days for these concepts, sir. So thank so you, you, sir. Want, you want two more days? Okay. Uh, because searching yes, and sir. sorting cannot be covered in one day. So let us see. I will also check with Ram Krishna, sir, and uh, Vamsi, sir. Uh, we will see uh, whether I can take one session extra or... If you want two sessions, I can also take two sessions. But let me discuss with them also. Thank you for uh, giving this feedback. And uh, yeah, Thank definitely you, your inputs are considered. Uh, yes, searching and sorting were not included in the schedule. But definitely, they are also very important. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Thanks Shri. for all my Swanandra College friends. Now I invite to Lakshmi Sruti. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening. evening to my faculty, CSC department, and all of the participants. I'm Sruti, a CSC student from Swananda College. I'm honored and lucky to have this opportunity to give you feedback on this session, sir. Really very wonderful sessions every day, sir. I thank Nagraju, sir, for your valuable and clear-cut explanation in each and every topic. You are explaining every concept by taking real-life examples. Like for linked list, um, you explain by taking the example of trains and bogies yes. so that we can easily and able to understand, sir. Every concept and program you are explained elaborately. Theoretically, you are explaining and practically you are executing also. These sessions are really helping us a lot, sir. Um, my request also, Nagraju sir, you, you should conduct one more session on searching and sorting topics. Okay. We are always ready to attend your class, sir. Always interested in your class, sir. Thank and you, I thank, thank and I thank my college management, Ramesh Babu sir, Ramakrishna sir, Vamsi Krishna sir, and all other co-conveners of this wonderful workshop. Finally, I thank my lecturer, Ramakrishna sir, for giving me this opportunity to give you a feedback on this wonderful workshop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Your, your input is considered Nagra sir and Omsi sir and myself also. And uh, tomorrow I will uh, announce the... Okay. So tomorrow and... is not the last session then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow is not the last session. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, am, I am definitely ready to share, but I am not sure how many searching algorithms I can cover. Sorry, a sorting algorithms. Searching, especially only two, linear search and binary search. And yes, in sir. sorting, there is a bubble sort, quick sort, merge sort, insertion sort, selection sort. There are so many. So I will check with Vamsi sir and Ram Krishna sir. Two hours means I will... Uh, uh, two... Two sessions, if it is given, like 
21 right 22nd and 23 i can cover more sorting algorithms suppose if only one extra session means i will come uh, cover little amount of sortings so it, we will discuss about it sir whether one session yes. or two session that means two hours or four hours thank you sir okay sir then our validatory okay sir hello yeah yes sir hello oh, hello thank yes, you sir. your uh, thank you sruti and bagitrena sruti bagitrena and uh, vaishnavi your uh, requirement is consider uh, nagra sir and myself also and manoji sir sir tomorrow uh, uh, give the read the instructions when it was uh, discussed okay and now i call to uh, meenakshi please raise your hand meenakshi please raise your hand yes sir okay sir give your value feedback on today's session i am the student of fanandra college of engineering and technology i attend all your classes sir in c programming and as well as data structures pro workshop i am very much interested to listen your classes sir you are explaining every concept with program very clearly sir uh, one more request sir my friends already asked you about that and uh, yeah. the searching and uh, sorting concepts please sir extend two more classes already my friends are tell about that and mainly i fear about data structures sir you are you are giving very clear explanation about that sir i am very happy sir that uh, my fear was little i am i can able to write uh, data structures programming sir thank Good. you very much sir thank you sir and thank Good. you nagraju sir and uh, vamsi krishna sir and Ma ram krishna sir and thank you nagraju sir for your sharing your knowledge with us sir thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you thank you so one of the participant baskar teja asked a doubt so he asked me in the chat box to open one directed graph baskar teja can you please unmute yourself and can you please ask your doubt hello sir good evening sir yeah good evening sir can you open the graph uh, sir in graph uh, actually there are uh, four nodes and there yes. are seven edges no sir yeah and in the graph there is a formula called as uh, v plus 2e 2e plus 1 what 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 is number of vertices plus v plus uh, twice of edges plus 1 sir vertices okay. plus 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 1 okay okay actually there are uh, four vertices and there are uh, seven edges in the graph I have you shown in the board okay. so actually uh, totally according to the formula v plus 2 into e plus 1 uh, there will be of uh, 19 uh, there will be the total according to the formula there will be 19 It will come nineteen, sir. If you calculate the number of edges plus the number of vertices plus one, sir. Yeah, yeah. This is a simple example. I didn't understand. You you are telling that according to the formula, graph is wrong or what? No, sir. Graph is right, sir. Huh? In the representation also, there is a in the representation of directed graph or undirected graph, uh, there is a three kinds of representation. I think so, sir. actually i heard in somewhat lectures and uh, oh and you are saying other than sequential and linked list there is one more you are saying yeah that is called as compact list uh, representation uh, let me let me check and i will i will also read i uh, till now i didn't hear about it to be very honest so let me go back and see that compact list what you are talking about and then let me get some idea then only i can answer your queries sir uh, and so okay, this is a very similar to linked list representation sir if you uh, let me see i didn't hear about it earlier so let me go back and see it and then i will again if i can understand tomorrow i will tell you about that okay sir thank you sir yeah yeah definitely definitely i will go and uh, see about it okay sir thanks yeah thank you baskar thank you yeah Over to the host. Thank you, Deja. Maska Deja. Thank you, Menakshi. 
I have, I hope all the participants understood it very well and the data structure programs and algorithms. So Nagra sir explained each and every line theoretically and representation graphically and execution lively and doubts clarification also. Thank you, sir. Nagra sir, once again. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks to you, sir. Your patience is awesome, sir. Uh, because uh, to us continuously, what energy, sir? This energy is very <laughs> awesome, sir. Students also. Students, uh, students, students are the. Thanks to I uh, thanks to students also because uh, students also daily continuously morning and daily uh, each and every student attended the regular classes and also as well as uh, attended the workshop also. Uh, I thanks to students also because uh, the. Uh, that's the reason, sir. Uh, morning, uh, two hours, and uh, evening, uh, afternoon, two hours, and again, evening workshop, two hours, six hours continuously uh, in front of the phone or laptop or system. Uh, your patients and uh, students also, very great. Uh, thanks to all the participants and uh, resource person also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, okay, finally, however, we have to celebrate our tomorrow yes, is not a, tomorrow. We are not celebrating our validity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir, no problem. I will take uh, one or two sessions. I think one yeah. session is enough, or you you tell me, sir. Whether I have to take uh, Mon uh, Tuesday and Wednesday also, or only Tuesday is enough? Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday, sir. No, no. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Monday. Monday. Uh, Tuesday. One, one more session I will take. One Monday. session I will take. I will try to wind up as uh, means uh, it will be very tough. I can also take two more sessions, but it will be, I don't know whether the participants, uh, means 20, hour, 20 days itself is a lengthier program, but it's okay. So we will see, sir. That, uh, but definitely, sir. Very important subject, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So any campus interviews asking data structures questions only, sir. It is definitely. very important subject for uh, students, sir. In campus, so minimum wise, one session. Uh, one session and, definitely uh, I will take, sir. I will take. Uh, uh, I think uh, students. Uh, I think. Uh, Students are giving feedback as well as asking uh, uh, some more concept means. Uh, students are connected very well, sir. Link list to you. <laughs> Strongly ionic bond is formed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all the students. Thank you all the participants. Thank you. Okay, sir. Then see you tomorrow. Thank you, right? sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you, sir. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Our sir. IPL is going to start, so we have to wind up now. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you all the Thank participants. You. Thank you. Sir. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.